Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for, uh, for the life you've given each of us. Lord, we thank you for the hope that we have with your son Jesus. Uh, we thank you that, that you lift us up in our time of need, Lord, and that you use us as, as broken as we are, Lord. You still use us uh, as tools to help encourage others and draw people to faith in your Son. We pray now that you use Pastor Izzy uh, to, to speak to each one of us, to encourage us for this coming week, for the challenges that we're going to face, for the opportunities we're going to have. Lord, open our eyes to see people the way you see them. Lord, and we also want to lift up um, Dr. Michelle Tenorio and her, and her father, Jerry, Lord, and we just pray for healing in his body. Lord, we thank you for the peace of Jesus, Lord, that you gave her. Lord, yes, we thank Lord. you for all, how much she did to help my father. And now, Lord, we pray that you, know, that you Heavenly Father, would, would touch his body and heal his body. We ask this all now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 He who finds a wife, the scripture says, he says he finds a good thing. And he obtains something from the Lord. Does anyone know what he obtains? Favor. Favor. So a wife is a big blessing. If anyone ever tells you, oh, that ball and chain thing, they do not know what they're talking about. You get a wife from the Lord, you get a blessing. And you obtain favor from God. And it's, it's God's favor to us men to give us our wives. I mean, I know I get in trouble every time I teach about the helpmate thing, you know, that God saw it was not good for Adam to be alone, so he made a helpmate suitable for him. It, it's not a trouble for me to teach it to the gals because they already know the obvious is, why does God make a helpmate for man? What does it mean that he needs? Help, help. help right. <laughs> See, the women never have, this is never a hard sell. They're like, we already know that. It's the guys that are, you know, a little bit I got to work on to get them to understand you need help and that's why God gave you the perfect woman to help you in this life now today we're going into the part of Corinthians if you'll turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 7 where I've actually heard preaching that blows my mind they actually think that because of the words that Paul writes in the middle of this chapter that somehow the Bible says God's against marriage they read it out of context. They don't, you know, follow the whole flow of the, of the teaching of the scripture. I don't know how they even come up with this. But there are some people that, you know, maybe they had a bad experience or something. And they read these words and they actually latch on to the words uh, kind of like pick and choose. They pick the ones they, they, that they like. And they come up with teachings like, uh, the Bible says God is against marriage. And he doesn't want you to get married. And if you're single, stay single. And, um... And they miss, I mean, you can actually preach that from this passage, but you have to like jerk it completely out of context to do it. And, and I want to show you what it says in the context, okay? We were going over last week how Paul had words to the ones who were married at the beginning of the chapter. And he, and he gave these words of encouragement because before, right before this chapter, he had finished chapter 6 was saying, do you not know your body is a temple for what? The Holy Spirit. And what were we admonished to do at the end of chapter 6 with our bodies? We're supposed to take our bodies, at, they're living sacrifices, right? And we present them to God. We say, here we are. And in 1 Corinthians, a little bit later, we're going to see this is actually the very first step. Worship 101 is presenting your body to God and saying, here I am, God, use me. That's all it is. True worship. True worship is not getting up and singing songs and, and you know, let's paint the ceiling with our hands and let's just hold and bow. And, you know, some people think that, that that makes them more worshipful if they do certain <laughs> gestures. You know what? You can do all these gestures and be thinking about the baseball game. Or lunch plans after church. I wish the pastor would hurry up and get done with this message. But I'm looking spiritual. Don't I look like I'm worshiping? And you can miss the whole point. And there could be someone sitting just over to the side, sitting there going, God, here I am, use me. 
I just give you my life. I give you my soul, my being, my whole body. It's yours. It belongs to you. Do whatever you want with me. And you know that to the Lord, the person who's actually praying, here I am, Lord, they're the ones that are really worshiping God. In a manner that God accepts. The, true, the truest form of worship is you saying to God, here I am. I present myself to you. Use me. However you see fit, whatever you want to do with me, I'm yours. My body, now we ended chapter 6 with this. You need to keep this in context. The end of chapter 6 said, your body belongs to who? To the Lord. You belong to God. You know, when you, when you come to Christ and you say, I want salvation, count me in. You know, let that Jesus thing on the cross, paying for our sins, let that I, sign me up. As soon as you, as soon as you ask Jesus, you know, you, you, you basically answer in the door. It says Jesus stands at the door and he knocks. And if any man opens the door, what would Jesus do? It says he'll come in and he'll sup with you. He'll, he'll come and be with you. For, you never have to worry. Jesus says, I'll, nev I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I love this. Jesus isn't one of those like, you know, conditional kind of folks, you know, like, I'll be with you, but only if you're on a good day or only if you do exactly how I want it to be and, and no messing up because if you mess up, I'm out of here. Does Jesus ever do that? No. no. He says, I'm with you low until the end of the age. I, I'll, I'll be with you forever. And I love that about the Lord. He's, he's constant. I mean, he's like, I'm there for you. I'm a rock for your soul. I, I am that one that is just an unshakable foundation for you. And in the world we live in, does it, does it pay to have that foundation, that solidness that, that you know the Lord is never going to leave you? How does that make you feel? I know for me it's like with everything as transient as it is and everything, the comings and goings of folks and, and, and the way our lives are today, it is a nice feeling to have something that stays the same. That the Lord is there for me. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and what? Forever. He doesn't change. So I have this solidness, this rock. And when I opened the door of my heart and said, yes, Lord, I heard that knock. And I said, I, come on in. And he came into my heart. My life was changed. That very moment that he entered, it was like, wow, forgiveness has entered my life. And hate that I had, I mean, some people don't believe me. I say, look, you don't understand. Before I was a Christian, I was filled with hate. I had hate galore. In fact, it seethed out of every pore. It seethed out of every action. People get in my way and I'd be like, look, I already have enough hate to kill you. Just don't get in my way. Because when you have a lot of hate, it feels wrong thinking. You actually learn how to kill people. You learn how to hurt people. And you do, you, you speak hurtful things like just, just like verbal vomit coming out of your mouth all the time. And you know, the, the worst part is you don't care. You actually don't care. I don't care if it hurts you. I don't care if I said you're ugly and it hurts your feelings because you're ugly. And I meant to hurt your feelings because I, I hate you. See, that's the way hate talks. It's mean. And boy, I had, I had such hate. And when Jesus came in my heart and said, I'll be with you and I forgive you. And I'm going to love you. And I'm going to love you so much. I love you just the way you are. But I love you too much to leave you the way you are because you need some help. So I'm going to change you. And I'm going to replace that hate with my love. Let me tell you, there was something that's so sweet when the Lord changes hate to love. Isn't it? And when, 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 when he takes you and he says, let me fix you. And he can fix. Boy, can he fix. He fix anything that's messed up in any of us. You know, some people go, how come you got the job? I said, because I was probably the most messed up. This way, when they say, I don't know if God can help me, I'm like, I'm pretty sure he can. <laughs> Trust me on this. He could fix me, you're no trouble at all. I mean, it's like, I just look at it in degrees of, you know, you know, you, we, we're talking super broken, messed up, full of hate, and you're only like a little bit, few chips out of the 
edge of the cup, you know, a little chink here. No problem. No problem for Jesus. I'm sure he can fix you. And when I said, I'll take that, he goes, we got we to gotta take away that hatred and put love there. We got to take away that, that hurt and put healing there. We got to take away that, that anger and, and we're going to put... We're going to put something you don't ever, and this is one that I had never experienced. It's called the peace of the Lord. He put a peace in my heart that I had never felt. I was like, whoa, where'd that come from? Has anyone can, can relate to this where you felt the peace that God gives? It wasn't your own. You, you know, it, it came from the supernatural. And he put that peace in me and I was like, wow. And he goes, I'm going to give you my spirit. That's my seal. That's my, my, my seal that you belong to me now. It's, a, it, it's God's way of saying, his property, here's my spirit. I, I, I give it to you so that you know you belong to God. And as soon as he did that, I went, I'm his. There was the sweetest peace, the sweetest love, the sweetest forgiveness. I knew I'm his now. And there was no denying it. I mean, there was a radical change in my, in my being. People were like, what happened to Izzy? And, and I got this yellow T-shirt. Bright yellow. Everyone told me it was the brightest yellow shirt ever. And it had flowers all around right here. It was one of those surf-style shirts. back. This is back in the 80s, or well, late 70s. They had these um, surfing style with flowers all around and it had in big bull print Jesus lives and I wore that shirt and they went how do you know he lives I said he's in here Jesus lives in my heart and as soon as he took residence in my heart I realized I'm his man I belong to him now does anyone else agree with this that, that when you open that door of your heart he comes in you now become his property Raise your hand if you believe that, that that's what he does in your life. You become, well, you're sealed by God. He says, belongs to me now. I'm going to take care of this. And this is one of the sweetest things. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And when, even when he was said, I'm going to go to, the, to my father's house. And in my father's house, there are many what? Mansions. Now, I go to prepare a place for you so that I can come back and receive you to myself so that where I am you get to be also I want you to be with me and their hearts were troubled they were like oh no don't leave he said I tell you what it's to your advantage I leave John chapter 14 says that our Lord records for John wrote this for us he says Jesus said it's to your advantage I go because I'm going to send the Holy Ghost and he's going to be with you and the Holy Ghost will teach you all things that you need to know He'll bring to your remembrance all that I've spoken to you. You know, the Lord is so good at reminding us of things that he has spoken by his spirit. Right when we need it, you know, in that very moment when you're, you're facing a temptation, that little voice that comes, you know the little voice, the one you didn't make up that goes, don't do it. Uh-uh, uh-uh. And you're going, where'd that come from? Because you were thinking, do it. And he's going, no, don't do it. And God's Spirit is with you, and you belong to Him. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.